Hello viewers, this is Wagda Ronald taking you through the tutorial on A-level physics and this tutorial I'm going to talk about the solutions to A-level physics for your NEB 2019 paper 1 and particularly question 4. Now where the necessary these constants can be used. Now this is the very question I left in the previous video and I believe by now you already tried it out and ready to check your progress. So let's get started. So we shall start with question 4 part A. And question 4 part A says state and illustrate Archimedes principle and they give it 5 marks. So Archimedes' principle states that when a body is fully or partially immersed in a fluid, it experiences an upthrust equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. So basically what we have done, we have stated Archimedes' principle and now we have to illustrate. So in illustrating we shall say, consider a block of uniform cross-section area A and height H a mass in a liquid of density rho. So let's first illustrate that. So this is the block of the uniform cross section area capital A and of height H as you see here. Plus say that its top surface is at a depth H1 below the surface of the liquid and the bottom surface is at a depth H2 below the surface of the liquid. So when the body is immersed in the liquid, it the volume displaced by of the liquid displaced will be equal to the volume of the block and is equal to area cross section area times height, which is that. So this will be the volume of the liquid displaced. Now that we know the volume, we can easily get to weight because we know that volume is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity, and mass is equal to volume times density. Then when you multiply the to get the mass, and after when you multiply the mass by acceleration to gravity, you'll be able to get the weight of the liquid displaced. So the weight of the liquid displaced will be a h rho g. We can also get the force on the top of the block. So force on the top of the block will be in this direction, acting downwards, and is equal to area times pressure. Now the pressure will be will depend on remember pressure in liquids depends on the depth. So the depth is H1, therefore area is A and pressure will be H1 rho G, which is that. So that is the force at the top of the block. Similarly, the one at the bottom will act upwards and to be equal to area times pressure where the pressure remember it depends on the depth and the depth is h2 therefore areas a and pressure is h2 rho g which is that now from there we shall get up thrust up thrust is equal to the resultant upward force so this force acting below at the bottom of the block minus the force acting at the top of the block will be will give you the resultant upward force therefore a h2 rho g minus a h1 rho g will give you the resultant upward force and when you simplify you shall come up with h h2 minus h1 in brackets whereby and if you look at this diagram h2 minus h1 is equal to h therefore you shall come up with our upthrust being equal to a h rho g and when you look at this compared with this realize that they are the same therefore shall come and conclude that since equations 1 and 2 are equal it implies that up thrust is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. I think you can see that it's in line with Archimedes principle whereby up thrust is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. So in that case we have illustrated Archimedes principle. Now let's see how mass can be awarded. So stating Archimedes principle that is one mark and that, that means that the four marks will be on illustrating. So one mark will be for getting the weight of the liquid displaced, half a mark for the force at the top of the block, 
half a mark for the force at the bottom of the block and then another a full mark for getting the resultant upward force then when you compare the two when you equate the two you'll be able to get the last mark to give you the four mark so basically that's what they wanted in part a now let's go to part b so part b says state the law of flotation and that is one mark then roman 2 describe an experiment to verify the law in b roman 1 above so let's start with roman 1 stating the law of flotation So the law of flotation states that a floating body displaces its own weight of the fluid in which it is it floats. So that is the law of flotation. Now let's go to Roman 2 which says that we describe an experiment to verify the law in B Roman 1 above. So first of all, the first step is to is that the weight W1 of the floating body in air is measured using a spring balance and recorded. So this is the floating body in air. It's connected to the spring balance and this weight W1 is measured and recorded. So step 2 says that an overflow can is completely filled with the water to spout level and the beaker is put under its spout. So let's first see how that is done. So this is the overflow can. It is filled with water to spout level. This is the spout and this is the spout level. And then you put a beaker below this spout. So initially this one is em the beaker is empty and this body floating body is not yet immersed in the cylinder so the floating body is then lowered into the can until it floats so you, you lower the body into the can I think you see that the string is now slack meaning that the body is now floating The water displaced by the floating body is collected in the beaker and its weight W2 is determined. So this what when you displace we place this body into this overflow can, it will float but it will displace some water and that water will go into this beaker. Now you get this water and can find out its weight and its weight will be W2. So it will be found that when you compare the weight of the floating body and the weight of the water displaced, you will find out that these two weights are the same and that verifies the law of flotation which says that a floating body displaces its own weight of the fluid in which it floats. So basically that's what they wanted in part B. Now let's see how mass can be awarded. So first mark is for stating the law of flotation. Then here getting the weight, measure, measuring the weight of the floating body in air, that is a full mark. Then filled the overflow can being filled with water to spout level and putting the beaker, in other words, setting up the apparatus, that is also another one mark. Lowering the floating body into the can, that is also another one mark. Measuring the weight of the water displaced, that is also another one mark. And comparing the two weights, that is also another mark. So basically, that's how the five marks could come about in this question. Now we shall go to part C, Roman 1. So part C, Roman 1 says, write Bernoulli's equation and define each term in the equation. And they give it two marks. So let's see how those two marks could be got. So that is Bernoulli's equation, P is equal to a half rho V squared plus rho GH equal to a constant. But remember they told us to define each term in the equation. So let's try to see how each term is defined. So P, this P, 
this P is the pressure energy per unit volume and this rho is the mass per unit volume and the V is the velocity of the fluid G is the acceleration due to gravity and lastly H is the height from the reference point so setting this equation that is one mark and also def defining what each term means that's where the other one mark comes from so what we do you shall mark any two of the symbols which have been well defined so for you to get this one mark now we shall go to part c roman 2 part c roman 2 says explain the origin of the lift force on the wing of a plane and they give it three marks so consider the wing of an aeroplane at take off so that wing will be in this shape so this is the wing we call it an aerofoil and this is the stream of air So now we shall say that the wing of a plane is shaped so that the air has to travel a longer distance over its top surface as compared to the lower one in the same time. I think you can see because of this shape it means that this air above the, the wing will travel a longer distance compared to this because of this shape which is a little curved. So what does that mean? It means that the air, air therefore moves faster above the above than below the wing of the plane. That and when it moves faster, it means that the pressure will be higher underneath than above. So in this case, you can see that pressure here there is low velocity because it moves the it mo covers a, a smaller distance in the same time as above. And when it is low, the velocity is low, the pressure will be high. On the other hand, above the wing, the pressure is low and the velocity is high. Okay, now, now that th that pressure being high at the bottom, it causes the lift force. Now let's see how marks can be awarded. Half a mark will be about the distance covered below and above. Then the word same time curve will take another one mark. Then faster the velocity above than below is also another half a mark. Pressure being higher below than above is a full mark. And then half a mark for the net upward force. So in the, in the end you'll be able to get your three marks if you write all this correctly. So now we shall go to Roman 3. Roman 3 says, Air flows over the upper surface of the wings of an aeroplane at a speed of 120 meters per second. So this will be the velocity of the up at the upper surface of the wind. And past the lower surfaces of the wings at 110 meters per second. So this is the velocity below the wing below the wing. Calculate the lift force on the aeroplane if it has a total wing area of 20 meters squared and the given is the density of air being equal to 1.29 kilograms per meter cubed so first of all we shall get the pressure difference p which is equal to a half row v2 squared minus v1 squared so v2 squared is equal to the velocity above the wing and v1 is the velocity below the wing next we shall substitute so this was the density of air it was given as 1.29 this is the velocity above the wing and this is the velocity below the wing so when you use the calculator we shall come up with our pressure difference being equal to 1483.5 newtons per meter squared next we shall after getting the pressure difference we can now get the lift force from force being equal to pressure times 
area so pressure difference is 1483.5 and the area wing area was 20 so when you use the calculator we shall come up with one two nine sorry two nine six seven zero newton so basically that's what they wanted in this part now let's see how much can be awarded so half a mark will be for stating the formula for pressure difference another half a mark is for substituting and full mark for getting the half a mark for the correct magnitude and another half a mark for the correct si unit then half a mark for stating the formula for lift force half a mark for substitution and a full mark half for ma correct magnitude and half for correct si unit so basically that's how the four marks could be got in this roman so i believe you have marked yourself and checked your progress the, what, what i'm going to do i'm going to leave you with another essay question still for paper one question five of 2019 for you to try out So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and if you haven't yet subscribed, please click on that subscribe button below this video for you to be able to receive updates when the next video will be uploaded. And also, if you know of any student who is not yet on this platform, please click that use that share button to share this link to as many students as possible via social media platforms like Facebook, WhatsApp and others. Otherwise, thank you for watching and have a good day.